Let's talk about Crow, a new experimental open source project from AWS that aims to make it simpler to orchestrate your Kubernetes resources. In fact, that's what Crow stands for, Kubernetes Resource Orchestrator. Let's jump right into it with an example. Let's say you want to deploy an application into Kubernetes, maybe a Node.js, microservice, WordPress, whatever you have. Uh, you know that you'll need to create a deployment and service, and I'm, an inten I'm intentionally simplifying this a bit. Um, you already decide you want to use Carpenter for cluster auto-scaling, node instance selection, that kind of thing, and you know that you need an RDS instance uh, because your app needs persistence, and you want to use RDS uh, as a service in AWS. Uh, deployments, Carpenter, those kinds of resources need an EKS cluster to run on, right? So let's draw out EKS here. Um, and RDS, let's say you want to create that using ACK, which is Amazon Controllers for Kubernetes, essentially a controller uh, to make it easier to manage AWS services from within a Kubernetes cluster. And there's actually going to be more resources here, EKS, you know, dependent on VPCs, subnets, and everything else that needs to be created behind the scenes. Okay. Now, by the end of this video, I want you to be able to understand how Crow is different than other similar tools, right? So uh, the first thing is that Crow makes it easier to abstract layers of dependencies. Let's see how that actually works. So off the bat here, let's say we have an app resource group. The application resource group will have a number of things defined here, things like the name of the application, maybe the image, deployments, services, uh, an ingress configuration for external load balancing. And let's also say the RDS uh, DB instance is also defined here. Uh, now, by itself, this resource group can't do much. But here's where things get interesting. Instead of having one big configuration file for all of our requirements, uh, we're going to separate it out into a second resource group here, which we'll call platform. And you can see here that Chrome makes it easier for development teams and platform teams uh, to kind of separate out responsibilities. So the platform team says, let's use a baseline EKS resource group uh, that all app teams will use. And then here we define things like uh, the EKS cluster config itself, maybe a Carpenter controller or, or not if you're using EKS auto mode, uh, any add-ons that you want to use, um, as well as the ACK controller. One thing that I want to point out here, Pro will let you work with any CRDs, any Kubernetes resources. Uh, and that's one of the key differentiators here with Crow that sets it apart from other similar tools. Okay, on that platform layer, we've got our baseline EKS configuration. Uh, my next advantage that I want to call out here, Crow makes it easier for platform teams to implement organizational best practices. Let's say in this organization, all apps need to use uh, mutual TLS for communication. And so at this layer, say we configure Istio so that app teams get it out of the box and they don't need to know that underlying security uh, implementation. Okay, last uh, piece here, let's call it the infrastructure layer. Uh, we're gonna have another resource group here. Without going into too much detail, just know that we have things like the VPC subnets and, and other you know, organizational best practices implemented here for what the EKS cluster itself needs. Okay, you might be wondering, how do dev teams make use of this, right? Well, what they'll do is create what's called an instance. And an instance will let them create a version of this application using a set of parameters that the platform team has exposed for them to use. So here, for example, maybe they can configure things like the name of the app the configuration for the image, and whether they need an ingress configuration for external load balancing. What you might not see here, uh, for example, is the ability to turn off mutual TLS or Istio, because that's an organizational requirement that comes out of the box, and the platform team doesn't want it to be configurable in this scenario. Okay. Now that we kind of understand how Crow works, let's cover the key advantages, differentiators of Crow. Number one, uh, there's intelligent resource dependency handling. So uh, by looking at how resources re reference each other, it's able to figure out the order in which to deploy the necessary resources. 
So for example, in this stack, maybe the VPC is the first thing is determined that it that needs to get deployed. Okay, next, uh, Chrome makes it easier for platform teams to implement organizational best practices. And we can see that here, hidden from developers view, uh, that Istio with mutual TLS is kind of enabled for all EKS clusters. And lastly, we saw here with these resource groups, the way we nest them uh, makes it easier to separate development team and platform team responsibilities, making it easier to work together. All right, while Crow is still an experimental project, we're excited to see what you think about it and what you do with it. Check out the links in the description below to learn more about Crow and let us know what you think. Provide us feedback. Thanks for watching.